Luther's audience lived in hostile conditions. They were surrounded by pagan people who did not understand or respect their Christian faith. Does that sound familiar? Our society is becoming more and more that way. And Peter's letter is written to help us all figure out how do we live in a place like that. First of all, he's going to tell Christians how to do that in society at large. That's this week's lesson. And then in the following lessons, he's going to focus on how we live in pagan places, in our homes, and finally in our faith communities. And throughout, there's going to be this thread of the theme of submission. Submission. Oh my goodness, that dirty word. But hear me out. This week he begins by telling us to submit to the authorities of the land. Now the Greek word for submission is hupotasso. Hupo means to come under and tasso means to marshal troops or arms. And if we put those two words together, it means to come under as we wage war. To come under, and I'm going to say as we're waging spiritual warfare. So when I submit to a government authority, I am arming myself for spiritual warfare on this earth. Spiritual warfare is a reality. God has his realm, Satan has his. They're in a battle to win the hearts and the minds of people. Now we know that God will be the ultimate victor, but we are called to stand against Satan and to be used by God to win the hearts and the minds of people today. How do we do that? Well, we come under them. It's our part in spiritual warfare. This coming under seems like a strange warfare tactic, doesn't it? But it's been proven to be powerful. The great Chinese theologian Watchman Nee tells this true story. A Christian man, a farmer, had a rice field and he would, it was in the hills of South China and to keep his crop alive he would pump water from below through an irrigation system into his crop, into his farmland every morning. His neighbor had two rice fields below his and one night his neighbor damaged the system so that it would not flow into the Christian farmer's field. Well, the Christian man, uh, he fixed that, uh, the damage, and he was able to pump water into his field again, but the man below did the same thing again, and then for a third time, and then a fourth time, and a fifth time. The Christian was so exasperated. He was angry outright and he even consulted a group of Christian men. They came together and they prayed together about what they should do, about what this farmer should do. And after they prayed, one of them said, if we only try to do what is right, surely we are very poor Christians. We need to do something more than what is right. And so the next day, the Christian farmer spent all morning pumping water into the two fields of his neighbor. And then that afternoon, he pumped water into his own field. The neighbor was so amazed at this action and so taken aback that he never tried to keep the water from the Christian's field again. And he even began to inquire why the Christian did this and ultimately the neighbor accepted Christ as his Savior too. Jesus teaches us not to stand on our rights, but to go that second mile for his sake. He gave us a model of that on the cross, and he tells us that we are called not to demand our rights, but when it is in the best interest of others, to serve them, to love them, to submit to them. But it's a strategic submission. It's a submission that we do from a position of strength and not a position of weakness. No one makes us submit. We do it out of our own free will, out of a love for others to make God look good and for everyone's best interest. That's biblical submission and it's a powerful weapon in the spiritual battle that's waging on the earth.